guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So before I get into this reading blog, because the title above says that it's a reading blog, um, I just want to give you some, uh, just a quick on my appearance. So it is December 2nd, it's Monday, December 2nd. And, um, I was supposed to start this reading vlog yesterday, but it was Sunday, so we starting today. But, um, yeah, I'm still in my little cozy robe. Um, I still got my scarf on from last night just because it's really cold. And it's just one of those type of days where I just don't feel like doing nothing. I didn't even fix my bed up. It's just one of them days. Um, really just one of them days. And the kids had a half a day today, so both my sister and my son just stayed home from school. Like I said, it's just one of them days. But... As the title says above, this is a reading block for one of my favorite authors. And I mean, if you've been following me for the two years I've been on YouTube, you know who my favorite biblical fiction author is. Like, Tessa Afshar? Oh. I love her. I love her writing. I love her books. She has seven books already out published. Of the seven, I gave six a five-star rating and one book a four-star. Like, come on. If that doesn't say favorite author for me, then I don't know what does. Um, but... I was blessed to have been given the opportunity to be a part of her launch team for her eighth upcoming release that will be released February 3rd. By the time you see this, it'll be like the last Saturday in January that I post this video up, um, just in preparation to hype up the release. So I'm making this video like a whole two months ahead of schedule when the book is released. But I, I, I could not go without reading this book in this month, like this year, I mean, like, for 2019 i need to read this book i have been super excited for this since i saw the cover i'll pop the cover here this cover here you guys can tell me it's not cute i think of all of her books it's my favorite cover i love the softness of it and i'm, I'm looking at the cover on the um, e-reader right now but i love how muted and soft it is but how just fresh clean and feminine it is i mean the font i'm here for anything script um the backdrop with the sky and how it looks grayed out is gorgeous. I love the florals and the coral color. It's just, it gives me life. Expect the week of the launch, I'm sorry, the week that this book is released. Expect my book to look makeup on this because I have to. It is gorgeous. But, um, yeah, I was blessed with the opportunity to be a part of her launch team. And I got an e-arc of it last month. And I was holding out reading it for December because I really wanted to read it early in December. And I just, I'm excited for this book. I don't think anybody understands the excitement that I feel because I love Tessa. Like, I love her so much. Her writing is amazing. She has a Bible study coming out too as well on Ruth, which I'm definitely going to get my hands on when that comes out. But um, right now, I'm going to look up what it says on Goodreads for the um, blurb or the synopsis and also mark it on my Goodreads. I'm not sure how much I'm going to read today just because I have a lot of catching up to do with like a lot of work, but we're going to read this book. So, I have it up on Goodreads. Right now, there are four reviews, 12 ratings, and it's rating at a 4.5 star rating. Um, a lot of the people that are in the a part of the launch team are loving it, and I just, I can't wait. So, I'm marking it right now as currently reading. Boom. Um, we have that as currently reading. Because I'm definitely going to read this. I would love to read this in one day, but it's probably going to take me two days. But um, I'm going to read the synopsis to you. This book is set to release February 3rd, 2020. And from what it says on here on Goodreads, it says about 416 pages, which I'm here for. Yes, I did pre-order me a copy already, so that's already set. But it says, a woman with a devastating secret, a man bent on proving his worth, a chance encounter that catapults them into the heart of history. When the daughter of a prominent Roman general meets a disinherited Jewish immigrant, neither one can dream of God's plan to transform them into the most influential couple of the early church. Nor can they anticipate the mountains that will threaten to bury them. Their courtship unwittingly shadowed by murder and betrayal, Priscilla and Achilla slowly work to build a community of believers while their lives grow increasingly complicated thanks to a shaggy dog, a mysterious runaway, and a ruthless foe desperate for love. But when they're banished from their home by a capricious emperor, they must join forces with an unusual rabbi named Paul and fight to turn treachery into redemption. With impeccable research and vivid detail, Daughter of Rome is both an emotive love story and an immersive journey through 
21st century Rome and Corinth, reminding readers once again why Debbie McComber, I think that's how you say that, McComber, <laughs> has said that no one brings the Bible to life like Tessa Afshar. So, it's about Priscilla and Kayla, obviously it features Paul. So, I have read the last three books that included Paul. I think they all included Paul, or did, no, no. I read her two books that included Paul, which were... Better of Angels, which I enjoyed this. I gave it a five-star rating. And then Thief of Corinth, which I gave four stars. It did include Paul in it, but I kind of like Paul better in this book than in this book. Um, this one takes place in Corinth. This one, I don't remember where it takes place. Um, Philippa. Duh. So, it takes place in Philippi. Sorry, I said Philippa, but Philippi. Um, so, I'm interested to see how I feel about Paul in this book because I didn't care for him in Thief of Corinth. And that one is set in Corinth. So, we'll see. I have high hopes to give this at least a 4.5 star rating. I've been seeing the quotes that people have been putting in the group, which is why I'm also making myself read it because because I'm in a launch team on Facebook. Um, people are like spoiling it for me, so I'm just like, let me read it myself. So, we're going to read this, and I have it open on my nook. I do have it on my phone as well, if need be, if I'm out and about, or if my, my nook dies, I definitely will switch over to my phone to read it just because we have to. Um, is Miss Tessa Afshar. Again, I... <laughs> I adore this cover. You guys, this cover is like the best cover she has of all of her books so far. But, we're gonna go and, oh my gosh, I'm like, this is so surreal to own a copy of this, be it E-Arc or not, like, I'm so excited. So, oh my gosh, you guys don't understand, you guys don't understand the excitement that I feel for this. I'm trying to skip ahead. So where's the chapter one? Whew. Okay, so it starts off with Psalm 78 and 4, which says, We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power, and the wonders he has done. So that's cool. And how many chapters is in this book? 34 chapters. Okay. I'm not I'm not ready, you guys. Oh my god. Okay. Prologue. Whew. Okay. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go season some chicken wings right now from my mom gets home because she gets off early today as well because it's snowing like really bad um my mom we live in jersey but she still works in new york um thank god for cars so i'm gonna season that before she gets home i'm gonna clean up my room a bit get on the bed and um read this book you guys like like i said i wanted this to be a one day reading vlog because i definitely wanted to like read it today but i slept i overslept it's a cold day i'm still cold like I'm even on camera looking, yeah, I'm, I, I look like this on camera, you guys, that's all I can say, um, so, yeah, I'm probably gonna decorate the tree, we did put the tree up, but we don't have it, like, fully open and decorated, so we'll probably do that later, but, um, yeah, so I'm gonna go quickly, um, do what I need to do, I wanna start reading at 2.30, um, so it's 2.04 right now, so I'm gonna give myself some time and come back to you guys when I start reading, so you guys can see me read, and get my first impressions on the first few chapters, which I'm, like, stoked about. Oh, my gosh. Like, this this is real, you guys. This book is happening. So, this will probably most likely be a two-day reading block, two and a half days, if I don't finish it tomorrow. But I really might stay up all night finishing this book because it's an ebook, And ebooks are quicker for me to read than physical books just because I can take them everywhere. Like, I can take it into the kitchen and, you know, read it while I'm doing the chicken. But I'm going to wait. I'm going to pause, and I'll be back. Okay, right, guys, so it's 2.34. Got my neck. I'm getting ready to crack this open and dive in. I got me some fruit snacks, welches, and the rest of my grape soda. And um, we're going to dive in.
Okay, guys, so I just read the prologue. It took me a minute because I was getting emotional. Because I could relate to it, in a sense, what Priscilla was going through in that prologue. Um, I wasn't expecting that. I think that is probably, by far, the deepest, most gut-riching prologue I've read from Tessa ever. Like, I wasn't expecting it. Actually, let me plug up my neck real quick. Because it's about to die. My son uses my neck to watch Netflix when he's eating. So, but, um, I, I wasn't expecting that prologue, um, honestly. I didn't think it was gonna be so, like, hold on, guys. I didn't think it was gonna be so heart-wrenching. Um, it does deal with abortion, so if you're, I'm gonna just say that's a trigger warning right now. Abortion at the beginning of this is definitely a trigger warning. Um, I wasn't expecting it, but I did find some funny parts, which I'll share with you guys some of the parts that I thought were funny. Um, so, there's a quote that I like at the very beginning, um, literally on the first, well, yeah, the first page of the prologue is a quote, and it says, time had become the enemy she could not conquer, and um, sometimes time really has a way of getting the best of us we feel like we have to do everything on a time schedule. And I'm like that a lot of the times. When I set a schedule and I have a plan, it needs to happen. And if things don't happen the way I want it to happen, like when I was in high school my senior year, I was like, you know what? I'm 18. I'm going to go to college. I'm going to graduate at 21. I'm going to have the greatest job. I'm going to get married before 25, have kids before 30. That was like literally what my timing was, me and my plans. It ain't work like that. I went to three colleges, um, and not that I flunked out of school. It was just financially too much for my mother to do on her own with four kids. She had me and my three siblings. So I ended up going to three different colleges, and I still have a semester to finish before I can actually get a degree. But, like, I went to three different colleges. I had a kid at 22? 23, 22? 23, 22. Honestly, I don't never remember when I had my son. But I was definitely over the age of 21 when I had my son, and I'm still not married. I've been engaged for six years and in a relationship for seven. And I don't have a job, and I've been looking for five years. Um, so it's just like, wow. So that's that. I, I just thought that was interesting. Um, so I don't, I don't want to get too in-depth about the prologue, because it's definitely one that I feel like will shock you. But I feel like it's essential to the story, so I'm not going to like give you anything... But um, there was this one scene where she's talking about the guy, Apius, I, Apius, I don't know how to say his name, to be on the screen. But she's like, his eyes eating, it says, his eyes eating Priscilla with hunger as if she were a ripe plum. That just made me laugh because I think about how guys really do look at women as if they're like food or fruits or anything sweet. And how they have like that, that hunger in their eyes. Visually, I could visualize it and thought it was funny. Um... She saw a young lady there that she knew of but didn't really know. There's some information thrown in, thrown in there about her brother, Valero, who... I don't like him. I don't like her brother. Her father was definitely a really nice guy. Her mother was a slave. So she's a daughter of a general and a slave woman. Um, which I love the love that her father had for her mother. That was really amazing. Her brother, I can't stand him. Like, I just, I don't like him. Um, she's comforting this young girl because she finds that this young girl had just had an abortion and um, the little girl, she's crying and she goes to comfort her in the midst of her preparing for her own, you know, procedure to happen. But like I said, she, there was a girl that she knew that was there that she didn't really know her, but she knew of her. And this girl cracked me up because she carries herself with this kind of like, she has this air about her where everything has to be proper and stuff. So... She comes out the room not paying attention and not caring about taking her time. She's just she's just trying to get out. So Priscilla was like, well, Antonia, was it awful? So she goes, don't be an imbecile. It is a physician's visit like any other. And if you say my name one more time, I will knock you so hard. You won't need the services of the surgeon. And I thought that was funny because I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure some of y'all thought the same thing. Like when people start talking to you and asking you dumb questions. And you be really wanting to hit them, like, real hard in their face. Like, yes, I'm a Christian. Yes, I'm, I'm holy and sanctified. Yes, I'm an evangelist. But we all have those human emotions and we all have those human thoughts. 
when it's like somebody's asking you questions or getting on your nerve and visually you're visualizing yourself knocking them out i'm just i'm, I'm being real with y'all but chapter one so this is four years after the prologue so i will say that prologue is definitely it's not too gritty but it's like you can read it and feel the emotions and stuff coming off the page and for me i definitely could relate to that so um that was interesting that that was an interesting prologue so we're gonna dive into chapter one now and um yeah So it's December 3rd right now, 10-11. Um, my son, well, out here where we live, I'm sorry you can't see me, you can't see me too much, but I'm taking off my coat, literally just walked back in the house, but, um, okay, put my coat on the couch, but yeah, so my son's school, um, at least the district out here, they decided to have school at um, 10 a.m. today, a late delay, so that's why I'm just now starting this vlog. But we're going to get back into reading. I'm going to quickly go make me some coffee. Or do I want some tea? No. I'm going to quickly make me some tea. Let me turn on my ring light. I just love my ring light so much. I need to get another one. Sorry, guys. But turning on the ring light, turning off this light, I'm editing like thousands of videos for the next two weeks. <laughs> I actually have to upload a video because I don't have it scheduled. Um, but I have my videos for the next two weeks already set. <laughs> I just need to upload them. Um, so that's done. So then we need to do that to that. But yeah, I'm going to quickly make some tea and get back to reading. Um, oh my god, you guys. I, I got to talk about my feelings because this book is very different from how I'm used to Tessa writing. Um... But I will say I'm enjoying it. And that's a little odd. It's very different from how I'm used to her writing. Um, but Priscilla is fantastic. Akila is fantastic. I think that's a package. Hold on. That was book mail. Woohoo! I just want to open this real quick. Let me put you guys on the tripod. Or my selfie stick tripod thing. Real quick. Sorry guys. I'm going to put you guys up here on this thing right quick but 
and just discuss my feelings. My bed isn't fully made yet. I need to fold up the sheets. But um, this is a book from Disney Hyperion. Ah, so cute. It's called The Monster Hypothesis by Romley Bernard. It's a, I think, a middle grade. I think this is middle grade. It's like a middle grade novel. Um, so yeah, here's the actual cover for the book. But um, it's a middle grade novel that I said I would review. So that came today, which is awesome. So I have this, I have to read this month too. But yes, so let me get my e-reader real quick. Quick thoughts before I go make my tea. So, I must say, um, Priscilla is very, very, um, okay, so she's a Roman and, um, she's, this is four years later after the situation in the prologue, um, she's now a follower of Yahweh, um, of Jesus Christ and, uh, yeah, she she's learning the different ways to follow um, Jesus. Then you have Akila, who is very much a prideful person. He is so... He reminds me of Salmon from Pearl in the Sand, whereas when Salmon had first met Rahab, he was very much like she's a heathen. He didn't like her because of what she was as a sauna, and he was very just judgmental. That's how Akila is right now, and it's kind of making me mad because I'm just like, oh, if you don't shut up, because you definitely can see the instant attraction that they have for each other. Like, he sees her and instantly gets attracted to her, but realizes that she's not, um, you know, one of the Jews, but she's a Gentile, and he's very like, well, Mary can't eat with her because she's a Gentile, and we can't do this with her because she's a Gentile, and I'm just like, if you don't shut up, oh my God, he's irritating me, but. He has a sweetheart, like a really, really sweetheart. He has gone through some stuff with his family, which is OD on several levels. Like, his ex did him dirty. I'm assuming his brother did him dirty as well. And then his father, oh God, his father is just... His father is a Jew that doesn't believe that Jesus is the Messiah, whereas you have these Jews who do believe that Jesus is the Messiah. So you guys should know the situation with that where some Jews believe he's a messiah some don't and his father is one of those people that believe in Yahweh but don't believe in the savior so he was sort of kind of disowned and he's still dealing with that so it's a lot going on um then you have Valero Valero I think that's how you say his name um he is Priscilla's older brother I don't like him I said this previously I don't like him he's mad petty and he's mad annoying like I, I, don't, I don't like him I don't like him like at all um rufus i love rufus i love Bina Bina yemen I, i'm probably saying it wrong so i'll throw his name on the screen that name i love him um and the senator i can't remember his name right now but i'm loving the senator and his family as a whole um and just the way that the senator seems to be like the connecting point for um priscilla and Aquila so far so i'm really really loving it it's really awesome um there is a dog i think his name is Fur Fox or Fur Fox, I don't know what his name is. It'll be on the screen. It's a weird name. But um, the dog looked like it's going to be like a really crucial part. And it reminds me of Harvest of Rubies where they, where um, Sarah and Darius ended up getting a dog. And the dog kind of helped them to, I'm just getting vibes from all her books. But I also feel like it's written differently. Because I find myself, like I'm enjoying it, but I find myself zoning out. And I don't know if you guys noticed it in the clips where you saw me reading where I kept zoning out of like the story because it was just like okay whatever next but I'm enjoying it it's a weird it's weird it's weird um there's a lot of awesome quotes that I'm loving let me just name a few for you guys give you guys a few that I've been enjoying so there were really a lot that I really enjoyed um this one with um Priscilla she was talking to um, Senator Putin's wife and um, she was saying how I'll pray to um, she'll pray to, to she, she said I'll pray for you so then the lady was like well thank you to what gods do you pray and she's like I pray to the Lord my lady and then um, the woman is like the Lord I'm not familiar with this divinity so then Priscilla says he is the God worshipped by the Hebrews my lady they do not believe in a pantheon of gods but worship only one creator of heaven and earth and sustainer of all that is in them and she says the, the lady says I suppose it makes life simpler 
and a lot of people think that it's simple believing in one God, but it's really not. And I like the way um, Priscilla says it. She says, I have not found it simple, but I have found it peaceful. The God I serve makes a way in the deserts of life. He creates streams in the wasteland places of our hearts. And it's so true. Just because you believe in God, just because we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, does not mean it's simpler for us because we have one Lord, one Savior. It's honestly a lot more complicated but even in it being complicated for us, because we still have to suffer, we still have to go through, it's, it's a given that we have to go through these things. Um, there's no real escape for us. Whereas other, I, I personally believe, because I've seen this throughout the time that I've studied histories and different religions and stuff like that, um, that other religions, they have escapes, you know? If this one God doesn't answer their prayers, they can pray to another God. And if that God doesn't answer their prayers, they can answer, you know, pray to this God. Or certain gods allow them to do certain things. And um, I feel like that's just a false sense of hope, or rather it's an escape from their issues. Whereas we who follow Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and God, there's only one God. Um, it doesn't matter if you're worshiping Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit, it's still... The, tr the, the Trinity, excuse me, um, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they're all one, but three different persons at the same time. So it's just like, there's no real running, there's no escape, and I don't know, I just thought that was amazing that she said that, and there was like a bunch of other things, but I don't want to spoil it too much. Um, I will have a book review coming the week after that the book is launched, so you'll see that, but so far, I'm like, so far I'm in love, I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. I don't forgot where I left off at. Oh, here it is. Is this it? Yeah. But um, so far, I'm really enjoying it. So I'm going to go grab me a cup of pumpkin spice tea because I'm really in a pumpkin spice tea mood. I really want to drink out of this cup again. And I keep telling you guys about this cup. Here's a tea infuser. Okay? It's a really big one for loose leaf teas. Um, you can even put your tea bag in there most likely and steep it. But I just don't use it for that. I do drink loose leaf teas. Um, I've had some teas from Tivana. I've had some from T Forte, which is amazing. I actually have some T Forte. Do I want some tea right now from T Forte? Mm. No, nah, I'm gonna just stick with a tea bag today. Um, but this is the basket for the um, loose leaf tea, which is great. But I'm loving this this cup. One, because I could put it in the microwave, and it got foiling on it, which I think is amazing. When you can put something that has foil in the microwave, you you sold me on it. Um, and this is ceramic. Is it ceramic? Yeah, ceramic. So, you know, and then it has a little top on it that I can keep my, my tea covered. So I'm loving it. But, um, you know, snooze on that. So, yeah, I'm going to get my um, tea going. And um, I got a lot of work to do today. A lot of work to do today. Um, but I want to definitely get this footage done i definitely want to finish this book today because like i feel like everybody in the group is spoiling me oh yeah i forgot i gotta write my write-up too for the newsletter for my church oh, so much stuff to do today i need to make sure 2020 i'm sticking to my planners because i've been slacking with my planners um so i think this month i'm gonna make a video on how i'm preparing my planners for 2020 and then maybe once a month like the beginning of each month i'll do like a plan with me video because I've been OD slacking, and I have so many planner stickers, it's ridiculous. So, yes, but I'm going to go make that, and I'll answer these emails later. I'm just, oh, my book shipped. Yes! I have two boxes of books coming, three actually, because I got some books from my son's book sale. I also have like three orders of books coming in the mail for me, and some books from my son coming. And then I have three boxes from the company Sips By, which I'll be talking about them soon. Um, I purchased them all on my own, like I didn't, I'm not sponsored by sips by so um i'm definitely tr i want to try out their boxes to see if i want to do it every month i think it's like it's a subscription box for teas you get 15 cups worth of tea they send you four of the same type of teas um they give you four different types of teas and you get four of those teas if that makes sense so i think that's 16 teas that you get for 15 cups of tea because they send you either tea bags or loose leaf teas depending um so i'm gonna try that company i also have three boxes coming for that um but I'm trying to see if there's anything else before i go okay 
So we're going to go make something to eat real quick and then come back and sit and read. I am at 24% on this book. So I'm hoping to finish this at least by 1 o'clock. Fingers crossed. I'm going to try to sit here for those hours and read. Fingers crossed. Y'all pray for me. Even though by the time y'all see this, I'll be done finished the book. But let's go get some tea and set up. Yeah. Okay, so I'm getting ready to read. I got me some cereal while my tea is steeping in the kitchen. And um, we're going to dive in. So I think I'm on chapter... I don't even know what chapter this is. <laughs> I am on chapter... I didn't make it that far. I'm trying. I'm on chapter six, so we're gonna keep reading. I'm gonna try to read up to chapter fifteen and then come back with my thoughts because my camera is about to be full. So by the time I'm done reading, I can just transport this footage to my computer, and then we can move on with life. made it to 51 percent um again i have that thing where i'm reading and then i'm zoning out i'm reading and then i'm zoning out i'm reading and then i'm zoning out it's good but um it's not keeping my attention like the other books i could just fly through it this one for some reason my mind is just not 100 percent into it which is weird um but i'm loving it so um I'm at chapter 17 and they have gotten married. I must say, Priscilla and Aquila are like the cutest little couple ever. Like, just the way they bond, banter, and act around each other. Um, Priscilla did tell Aquila what happened in her past um, four years ago when she was 16. So, that kind of like made Aquila upset. And he was real, just, again, being snooty about it, which kind of pissed me off. And then Rufus, of course, had to come through and pop him upside the head a few times with his words. He got it together. And then he went to her brother's house and was like, tell Priscilla I'm here to marry her. And da 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 He went off on her brother. Let me just say that. But it was, like, comical the way he went off on him. So I love that. Um, the senator ended up coming to the wedding and acting as her sort of father, in a sense, since her brother doesn't do anything and her father is dead. Um, so far, so good. And there is definitely somebody trying to kill her because she's already had three attempts on her life. The first time, someone broke into her house, um, but the thing is, you can't get into the house without somebody allowing you in the house if somebody let the the guy in to kill her that's number one and he choked her to death until somebody came the second time um the person ran her over with a car and the third time the same person tried to kill her by stabbing her in the back with a, a freaking knife so somebody's trying to kill her i feel like it's either her brother but i don't think her brother is being that petty i think it might be um apia whatever his name is the guy that she was that she met back when she was 16 i feel like it could be him um personally or it could be antonia found somebody to kill her but i don't think it could be antonia but you never really know with tessa so right now to want to have suspects because i don't think it's her brother i feel like her brother loves her but he's very he's such a prideful man that um he's not allowing himself to love her um we find out more information about Akila's family and what happened with that and let me just say his younger brother is disgusting um his ex esther disgusting his father disc his father is up there with caiaphas for me caiaphas from um 
the Lion and the Butterfly trilogy, he up there. Like, Caiaphas is way up here, but uh, Achilles' dad is, like, right up under him because that that's just, I can't, it, it disgusts me. But I'm loving seeing them come together. But the fact that there we're only 51% of the way through this book and um, they have their happy sort of ending, I know something is getting ready to happen that's going to crush me because we know Tessa likes to crush hearts and then puts them back together. So, yes. But again, my only gripe is that I... Alright, so it's 12.58 right now. Basically 1 o'clock. I should have been done. Normally would have been done. Um, well, on top of that, I'm editing at the same time. So I'm editing videos. I just scheduled three videos for the rest of this week. I uploaded today's video. I scheduled two videos for Wednesday. I'm going to have an extra video up and then my regular Thursday video. And I'm editing my Saturday video right now. So I'm editing videos and doing multiple things. But right now, I'm just like, I don't know. I'm definitely going to finish this book today. Like, it's going to be finished. Like I said, I'm on chapter 17 you see that so more chapter 17 definitely finishing it today it's a really good book but for some reason my brain is just not it's not there for i'll read a few paragraphs and zone out and then read some more paragraphs and zone out but i'm loving it so i don't know if that means this is going to be like a four star rating Nah, not a four star it's probably gonna be like a 4.5 4.75 um unless something happens in the last like 49 percent of the book to give it a five stars just because i'm not completely like my brain is just not i don't i don't know what it is i don't know if it's the writing style is a little different or i don't know i'm loving it but i'm just i'm not sticking with it normally i can stick with the book and read it through that's not happening for this book like at all so i don't know but I'm going to keep reading. I love Akila and Priscilla together. They are, like, the cutest thing ever. I know, like I said, something is about to happen, and I'm not prepared because Tessa knows how to just throw loopholes and just things at you. But um, definitely somebody is out to kill Priscilla. I don't know who it is. I feel like it could be her brother, but it probably couldn't. It definitely could be her ex, Apio, Apius, whatever his name is. Apia, don't... That dude from when she was 16 years old. It could be him. We don't know, but we know that there's a man trying to kill her that's it and what pisses me off is that priscilla is such a sweet person that she doesn't realize somebody's trying to kill her like she's like oh no it's just an accident oh no it's just a coincidence like no somebody is trying to kill you like girl get it together somebody's trying to take your life but you know she's very much sheltered she's been stuck in the house all her life basically because her brother kept her there but, um, I feel like something's gonna happen with Valero to make him more open to his sister. Um, he has such hostility against his father, which I understand, but I also dislike at the same time. It's like, I understand you're angry with your dad about what happened with your mom and, um, when you were dying and stuff. But it's also like, bruh, get over it. Like, this is your little sister. Come on. We, Yeah. I'm loving it, though. The characters are all amazing. I'm loving every character, even the ones that I should not love. I'm loving them all. Um, they're very much different characters. They're very um, dynamic characters. They're not just like a one-shot deal kind of character, if that makes sense. They definitely have different levels to them. Um, even the ones that I should hate, like Valero, I hate him. Um, but I also feel like he has a soft spot in his heart. That will be revealed soon. Like, Caiaphas from the Lion and the Butterfly trilogy, I hated him through and through. There was no redeeming nothing for him. He, there was no redemption. Just, I hated him. But um, in this series, I feel like everyone has that moment when they're going to be mean, where they're going to be evil, where they're going to be good. Um, maybe not Priscilla, because Priscilla's a little too sweet for me. She's definitely a sweet girl compared to all the other characters that um, Tessa has written. You know, Rahab had her downs. Um uh sarah had her downs lydia had her down i'm looking at the books to see you know all her other female characters definitely had the, their um ins and outs you know whereas this female character is very much like a sweet girl through and like legit sweet girl through and through um she had that one mishap um and in the prologue which is four years ago but now she's very much like sweet um she definitely is a lover of god's people she definitely is just tender-hearted and caring and she's all about the community and helping those who need she will literally starve herself to save her meal to give it to someone else which i think is beautiful but um yes 
So it's 103. My son gets out at 245, excuse me, 245. So I'm going to try to continue and finish this before he gets out of school, hopefully. But I'm loving it. But I'm also just like, I'm not, my brain is just not connecting with just one shot deal type of read. So we're going to continue. I'm going to come back with my thoughts. Yeah. So I'm on, I think I'm on chapter 24 or 27, 24. Yeah, I'm on chapter 24 and um, some progress. We're on 72% of the way through. It's 157 right now. So I got 45 minutes to finish up, but okay. So some stuff went down. Basically my thoughts were correct concerning the person that was trying to kill um, Priscilla. I'm not going to say who it was. Um, but it was definitely the person that I thought it was, which is insane. I, I don't know, I, f I still feel like maybe it's not that person, but so far they've said that it could possibly be that person. It's not like 100% confirmed, but, um, yes, yeah, so they have taken in a little boy, which is so cute. His name is Marcus. They took him in and, um, he's been living with them. This little boy kept who he was a secret for a reason, and when it's finally revealed why and who he is, it's heartbreaking. It's just like, ugh, killing me apart. Um, they are basically banished from Rome, so they left and went to Corinth, and Paul has met up with them in Corinth, so now they're all working together. And right now, Priscilla and Aquila are dealing with some kind of issues or miscommunication, if you will, within their marriage. Um, Priscilla is upset because she's been married now to Aquila for two years, and she's without child, and she cries every time she has her period. And then you have Aquila, on the other hand. He feels like he's let his wife down. So it's kind of like she's not giving him affection because she feels like he doesn't love her because she can't give him a child. But he's not giving her affection because he feels like that he's let her down so they don't show affection to one another um and it's all due to miscommunication like it the scene that i just read was just like bro really so miscommunication is going on with them but things are looking up they are getting more business in corinth and um things are starting to move paul is now working with him with the leather making and tent making and things like that um so yeah things are crazy right now and I'm just interested to see where it goes. 72% of the way through. I just want to know what happens next. Like, it's starting to pick up, but it's still... I don't know. My my brain is not... It's, it's... Yeah, like I said before, my brain is not connecting to just let me read fully through. It's like I read and go sideways. I read and go sideways. So, I don't know. Right now, it's definitely a 4.5, 4.75. I'm not sure if it's a 5 star. Um, just because of that slight disconnect with my brain, it's just not, it's not there for, I don't know why, but yeah, that disconnect is killing me because I could have been, I could have finished this book like three hours ago, but there's a huge disconnect in my mind with this book. And I, I posted it up in the launch team Facebook group that I feel like her writing in this is definitely different. I can't pinpoint what it is, but it's something different about her writing in this book that I'm loving it, but I'm also disconnected. So, definitely a 4.5, 4.75 right now. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. But it's 2 o'clock. I'm going to keep reading. Hopefully, I can finish this, like, 15 minutes before my son gets out of school. Just hoping so. I also need to track, actually, our package from Scholastic. So, let me do that right now. Um, because they have the Scholastic books out every month and his school does it. And I order, I ordered myself three books and got him a bunch of books and a rock set. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that that rock set is like real rocks because I love like, I don't know what it is. I have a fascination with rocks, clouds, and um, 
seashells they're like they're just really relaxing and calming to me so i'm gonna check that i know the order was put in already so i just don't know when it's going to be shipped out that's what i need to check my other orders have been shipped out i'm just waiting on the scholastic from his school to be shipped out as well as my three tea boxes to be shipped out what you mean that's definitely the password I'm a little bothered right now because it's saying that that's not my password. Is it this one? Oh. Because my email is wrong. I'm about to say that's definitely my password. Don't play these games. Okay, there we go. But yeah, I'm going to get back into finishing up 72%. I'm going to try to get to at least 90% before I leave 400. So, yes. Okay, I'm on chapter 30. 86% of the way through. It is currently 2.30. 15 minutes. I'm not going to finish by time. I've got to pick up my son, but I will finish it today for sure. By um, about 5 o'clock, definitely be done. But, okay, so Paul has basically spoken to... Priscilla and Akila, and they both divulged their shortcomings in a sense, and then they were able to talk to each other. They had a cute moment with Marcus. Um, they basically want to adopt Marcus, but because he is so young, he's probably somewhere between 11 and 12 right now. He's less than 13 years old right now. Um, they don't want to adopt him right now because if they adopt him, then that means that they are stripping him of his Roman citizenship, and they don't want to do that. So they do call him son, but they want to wait till he's older so he can decide whether he wants to give up his citizenship and all of his inheritance because that was stolen from him by his uncle because his uncle did something terrible, which is crazy. But um, Marcus is like, well, what if I don't want that? They're like, well, we're still going to give you the chance and wait. So, you know, he's like, can I call you mother and father? So it's so cute. It's amazing. And um, yeah, so Antonia happens to be in Corinth because she is banished. She got banished because she was being a little, she was being a thought, basically. Um, a real thought. She was messing around with a married man and then threatened the, the man's wife. Um, by sending somebody to try and scare her off and it was told to her uncle who is the caesar and um he banished her because the, the caesar has no time for wicked women who play those games because his wife cheated on him which i thought was funny um and priscilla finds antonia takes her in and begins to help her and antonia's like well i tried to kill you and i tried to do this oh damn i just spoiled it whatever but um yeah, she basically is like, well, why are you helping me? And Priscilla is just like, I'm going to help you because you deserve a second chance. It is what it is. And, you know, I think that Priscilla is such a sweet person. Like, for real, her heart is really pure. And I'm loving it. So, yes. Four chapters left, you guys. Four. Because there's 34 chapters in this book. I'm on chapter 30. So, well, if you... Really five, but I'm going to say four. But, um, I just... I'm definitely settled at a 4.75 because there's just something that's not letting me give it a 5 star. I don't know what it is, but there's just a disconnect in my mind. I don't know. I've, I And I honestly feel like it's the writing style is very different from her other books. And I don't know if you guys read the book and um, pick that up. Let me know. Maybe it's just me because I'm like a super major fan. And it also could be because I had like super high expectations for this book. I was like super, super stoked. So even though I'm reading this now in December, I am going to reread it probably in March. Um, give it a month after, you know, that it have given me what three months to really settle in. And then I'll reread it when I get my physical copy just to see if maybe it was just my expectations or if it really was a writing style. So when I get a physical copy, I'm going to see if it's, I, we're going to see, but chapter 30, can you see that? Chapter 30, chapter 30, and um, I'm going to finish reading. It's almost time for me to pick my son up in like 10, 15 minutes. So I'm going to see if I can read this quickly. 86% of the way through. The next time I come back, I'll have finished this book and I will give you guys my final thoughts and my final rating right now. 4.75 maybe a 4.5 but i'm sticking hopefully to a 4.75 but we'll see so i'm gonna continue reading okay guys so it is 325 i have finished i finished it up on my phone um while i was out at picking up my son up from school so i finished it but 
I'm going with a 4.75. Um, I enjoyed it, but there was a difference in the writing for me. I don't know what it is. Sorry if you guys hear my son. He's home. Both the kids are home, so they're going to be loud. But um, I don't know. There was just some type of disconnect that I had with the story that just didn't allow me to flow with ease with it. Um, it is definitely a good story, nonetheless, about Priscilla and Aquila. But I think what it is is I'm not as fond as... I'm not as fond of her New Testament stories as I am with her Old Testament stories. Um, I didn't really care for Paul in this book. I still prefer him in Bread of Angels. Um, this would definitely come second, and then Thief of Corinth would be third for me of her New Testament series. He has actually four of them. Yeah, so of the three written with Paul in it, it definitely would come second to Bread of Angels. But I would still place this book third. Um, it would be Land of Silence, Bread of Angels, then it would be Daughter of Rome, and then Thief of Corinth. Um, <laughs> my son is so silly, I cannot deal with him. Hopefully you guys can hear me. But, um, I love the way it ended. I felt like the explanation of her title, because she does always explain her titles in her stories towards the last few chapters. I don't know. I enjoyed it, but it wasn't. It wasn't what I what I was expecting. If that makes sense, like I guess I put too high of an expectation. I don't know. There's just. I guess my expectations were like set too high because I love her writing so much, and I felt like this this was definitely written differently. Um, I love Priscilla and Aquila. They were just so cute together. Like they were they were cute. They're definitely one of my favorite couples um, because I love their banter back and forth. Um, it ended well, you know, she had a, a powwow with her brother Valero, and, um, things ended well for Marcus, and they were able to go back to Rome and blah blah blah, but they ended up going to Ephesus with, um, Paul in the end. It was good, but like I said, there was just a disconnect that I had for, I don't know why, mentally. Yeah, you guys saw it as I was reading the story, I kept getting drawn to other things, like on my phone, checking emails. Normally that's not the case with her book, so... I don't know, read it in two days, um, or rather one and a half days, because I really didn't read it all day yesterday. But it was a pretty good read. 4.75 star rating. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to discuss this book in my book look makeup tutorial, because I, I have to do a look on this. Like, it, it just, it's, it has to happen. It's probably going to be a mint neutral eye with a coral lip, just to coincide with the um, colors on the cover of it i don't know who this is calling me hold on i don't know why these people call me like i got a, a car they'd be like we're trying to call you with your car's extended warranty i don't have a car why are you calling me i don't like people that do that like those those scam companies and stuff like that but whatever but yes um that's my thoughts i'm gonna sit and stew on my thoughts a little longer i am thinking maybe in the next two weeks i'm going to record my book look makeup tutorial it'll be the first one that i record but it'll be the second one you'll probably see because the first one is still going to be delilah sometime this month um so well not this month sometime in december because you're not going to see this video until february as well as the book look makeup tutorial so I probably will post a book look makeup tutorial the week bef that Saturday before the release and then the following Saturday I will post up um, the this reading vlog if that makes sense but yeah I don't I don't know 4.75 star rating that's where I'm at 4.5 really but I'm giving it that 0.75 because that ending just for me was perfection but I gotta take away 0.5 because I kept my mind just kept phasing off to other things. I don't know why. I don't know. So we'll see. Like I said, I'm definitely going to reread this book when I get the physical copy. But um, for now, Daughter of Rome was a good read. I definitely recommend it. Again, Tessa is one of my favorite authors, biblical fiction-wise. I love the way she writes and flows. I love the way she weaves scripture in while still keeping true to the Bible, but giving you a fictional story at the same time. It's so relatable, so real. This one, I definitely could relate to a lot more. I think, well... This one is definitely up there with Pearl and the Sand as far as relatability. Pearl and the Sand was definitely relatable, but this one as well because of some personal things that I had gone through and dealt with in my life. So as far as relatability, this is definitely like second to Pearl and the Sand for me. But as far as like my overall favorite is, I don't, I'm looking at the books now. It's definitely going to probably 
top it's it's in my top six you know um we all know that my least favorite is thief of corinth just because i don't i just couldn't connect with it at all um i've read that book two three four maybe four times i don't even know how many times i know it was over two times i read that book so we're gonna try reading that book again to see if maybe i can bump it up to a 4.5 but my my top from tessa is still going to be um pearl in the sand followed by harvest of ruby's duology like we just have to um following that it'll probably be land of silence and then bread of angels so yeah this is my sixth favorite novel from her she has eight total so this is definitely my sixth i'm just accepting someone because you guys be um always request me on the holy bible app which i'm always here for but um yeah so this is definitely in my top six right now my top five is still going to be Pearl in the Sand, Harvest of Rubies, Harvest of Gold, followed by Land of Silence and Bread of Angels. Then we would have Daughter of Rome, um, In the Field of Grace, and then Thief of Corinth in that order. And it, it probably sounds weird because In the Field of Grace definitely got a five star for me um, over Daughter of Rome. But now that I'm thinking about it, I might have to bump. I might have to bump that down to a 4.5. I'm going to have to reread the book over and see if I'm going to stick to a 5 star for um, In the Field of Grace. That's the story on Ruth, Naomi, and Boaz. But overall, I'm I'm just lagging out with this video. So my thoughts, I enjoyed it. I loved it. I loved the cover. The characters were amazing. But my brain just couldn't connect. I don't know what it was. I don't know why it was. We're going to try to reread this next year. But overall, it's a good, it's a good book. It's a good read, great read. Love it. Tessa is amazing. And I'm still saying the same thing over and over again. So I'm going to end this reading vlog by suggesting that you guys definitely check it out when it comes out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.